Bobby, they are ready. And I, I hope that we get a foul-free first half. So let the stars be stars tonight. Purdue wins the tap. Anderson, Sermons, Pfeiffer, our officiating crew. We are underway as Purdue looks for another outright Big Ten title. Illinois trying to keep their hopes alive in the conference. Edie with a deep catch. Now Smith coming off another big game, 23 and 9, and a win over Michigan State and a turnover. Kaufman Wren coughs it up. Well, Trey Kaufman Wren went for 23 in that meeting back in January, and he had a lot of single coverage in that first meeting. Right there, Illinois showing bodies and bringing the post trial. You're going to see Illinois try to get different looks, maybe on the pass, maybe on the first bounce. Try to keep Purdue off balance. Shannon, short, gets his own rebound and puts it in. There's a the physicality you talked about. Well, with, with Braden Smith, you know, he's certainly given up some real size. And Terrence Shannon, 6'6", six, six, first play of the game, getting on the offensive glass and the Illini on the board rebounding. Interior touch for Edie around the horn. Jones looking back inside. Edie crowded outside. Three ball, no. And the rebound fought for. This is what Underwood was looking for. Dominate the glass, as Robbie had talked about. It'll be a big battle between these two teams. Curious to see just what Fletcher Lawyer can do defensively right there, struggling. And Coleman Hawkins living at the rim. Robbie, you talked about that. Fletcher Lawyer's ability to stay on the floor is going to be predicated on his offense. You have to think. He's going to have to make some shots, yep. and he's going to have to guard better than that. Smith caught up. Great defense by Shannon. He got the triple back. Who started this game over one and a turnover? Jones inside, kick it, lawyer, one dribble, pull up, pure. Nice job by Lance Jones maintaining the bounce and getting downhill to find Lord. And the shot clock play is going to be huge for both teams here. Great dribble drive on the baseline. How about the shot fake by Lawyer? He stays hot. Broke out of that shooting slump against Michigan State. Top two scoring teams in the Big Ten among the top in the country as well. Ranked two and three in Ken Palm and adjusted offense. Hawkins misfires and he needs a flat from the board. They call it ran. Good defense there on the bounce for Coleman. Jones thought about it. Leave it. Smith. Inside, Edie, crowded, Edie, trying to force it. Matt Painter talking to Jeffrey Anderson, thinking there was some contact there. Gary all alone, for three. Thirty-six percent from three on the season. Two of the better three-point shooting teams in the Big Ten this season as well. Lawyer is bumped on oh the table. Oh my goodness. Wow. No foul? Well, they, they called a foul there. That felt more like a little bit of a message there from Coleman Hawkins. I mean, he, he totally lowered that shoulder and sent Fletcher Lawyer flying. I mean, that. I'm with you, Robbie. That's not. <laughs> he's not going for the ball. I, I think that that was message sent here. And, Illinois trying to, to maybe establish some of that toughness, that physicality, and the thing is now, though, Coleman Hawkins have to be careful. You can't take one like that and pick up a second cheap one. It's great call. Especially against Zach Eady, who draws more fouls than anybody in the country. Nearly 10 per game. Get it back to the big man, working on Hawkins, and he floats it up and in. You let him get to that left shoulder, and he's got you deep. I mean, send, send prayers up. That's right. <laughs> because... <laughs> Hawkins has got to make him try to go to that right shoulder, but it, it's so much easier said than done. Let's do now two for four. Illinois three for five to start this game. Shannon on the attack. Bates Eady bounces inside. Rogers couldn't handle it. Great defense by Zach Eady that time on the anticipation. Lawyer attacks. Can't finish. Good defense by Gary. Numbers the other way. Here comes Illinois. Hawkins. Attack mode. Leave it. Rogers. But Matt Painter is not happy right now with the officiator lack thereof in his opinion. Transition will be key. Matt Painter really preached to his team, keeping Illinois out, and then you can just dump it down and let Edie go to work. Boy, Big that, time that, flush. That's, that's the counter right there. And Coleman Hawkins trying to swipe down. Maybe fortunate he didn't pick up number two. But you're thinking he's going left shoulder. And man, I love the fact that Edie's just rolling downhill to the rim, not spinning east and west. 
Rogers offensive rebound. Shannon thought about another tree. Instead, kick it. 18 to shoot for Hawkins. And they'll reload with the mask coming off a massive game at Wisconsin. A homecoming with 31 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. Pull up, pop, money. Look, that's pretty good defense right there. That's what I'm saying. Trey that's Coffin Wren's all in his grill, and he's still getting the fade away on the baseline. That's pretty impressive. That's where Trey Coffin Wren, Steven, you're, you're just tipping your cap and saying, I've done my job. Right. And a turnover. Edie couldn't handle the entry. The mask back from Coleman. Nice defense by Purdue. It'll go the other way. First time out on the floor. 15-19 to play. We're off and running between the top two teams in the Big Ten. Well, you're talking about the good ball movement there. Tied for seventh most in conference history. Just 19 seasons now with Purdue. A remarkable run in West Lafayette for Payne. He's looking for his team to get themselves back into this one. So, Robbie, what, what's the deal in the shoot around now compared to what you planning to do? Uh, they're a little more chill now, but I think that comes with age and maturation and, and going through and being a head coach for 20 years. Nice trip by Dane. Dane John Eady. Skip it. Shannon. Three. No. Danger's there for the offensive board. But Purdue just never got their floor balance. Eady was out contesting the shot. And how about Dane Danger giving more good minutes and a guy, Steven, that we've seen kind of find a role here over the last three games. Yeah, always efficient when he touches the basketball and getting on the glass. You know, Underwood talks about Dane, one of the better guys on their team that can get rebounds above the rim. That time the defensive transition or guys fail to pick each other up. Purdue looks a step slow tonight. Yeah, a, a little bit shell shocked here early, and this is a massive game for Illinois. And you're, you're playing to get a share of the league, and they're going to need some help to do it. But this is going to be a real test because the Illini have been just on fire offensively, and Purdue's defense, while good on the season, they, they've kind of taken a little bit of a step back. It feels like since February first. You know, Robbie, I think Purdue gets everybody's best shot. That's that's so it's true as wear well. you down at some point. Illinois already with a 6-0 advantage on second chance points to start this game. Not even midway through the first half. It's nice cut by Gillis and he's fouled by Danger. Boy, how good was that from Mason Gillis? I mean, you're taking that, that screen and you are just sawing it off to the rim. That's a cut to score. You see so many players, they're thinking, man, I'm cutting because I was told to cut. Mason Gillis is cutting that to take this right to the basket. Good use of the shot fake. And what a year that he's had. I mean, you're talking about one of the really good glue guys in the Big Ten. I totally agree. And it's a rare glue guy that can pop you from three. No doubt. If you're not paying attention, he can, he can hurt you. 14 of his last 28 from the three-point line. Shooting 48% from three on the season. He has had a big-time senior year. And you know what? I, I, I also am paying attention to Purdue's going to pick on Luke Goody. Goody's going to have to make a stand here defensively. He's going to stay on the floor. Gillis, the top free throw shooter on this Purdue team, 85% on the season. He's adjusted to that bench roll beautifully, as mentioned. Had started 63 of 93 games over the first three years of his career as a boilermaker. The mask leaves it for Shannon. There's Danger, one-on-one -on -one against Edie. He wants to take the challenge, and he loses the basketball. The big fella just moving his feet on the baseline there, because Danger can face up and put some pressure on you with the bounce. And Edie using that baseline as a second defender. Moving the feet, well done. I think Zach Eady, he's so good that we don't talk about him enough. His numbers are, you know, you get used to him. Yeah, exactly. Like Jordan Murphy, where we'd be like, well, he got 18 rebounds. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. not every game. Yep. Yeah, like, this is 30 and 10 is, is normal. The guy, he's got better each and every year. Now cool. showing up on the draft board. Smith can't finish. The mass claims the board looking to run. Up ahead. Justin Harmon checked in for Illinois. Goody out of the floor as well as Danger. Shannon and Damask stay out there. Shannon likes the matchup with Gillis. Goody, who's been nursing an ankle injury for Illinois, leaves it. Harmon attacks inside Danger, and he stepped on the baseline. Another turnover. That's the right idea. You, know, you get that dribble drive into the painted area, and you're dumping that off. Danger's going to have a little bit more awareness here of where he's at. And you can see just that left foot. As he reestablishes himself, that thing is on the line. I'd like to see Harmon, though, go ahead to eat. You know, if you get it thrown back, that's okay. You got to challenge the big But don't you feel like a lot of players, they, they see someone like an Edie and they think, man, I can't get my shot blocked. I think you're right, Robbie. There's an intimidation factor that goes into it. Lawyer can't hit the three. Edie engulfs the rebound and he's fouled. 
the first surge of offensive rebounds that we've seen here from Purdue, Illinois, with a couple early ones. But to me, Stephen, this is going to be the game. You're getting a late contest, and then you got E taken on two Illini defenders, and kind of just going right through them. Doing a great job on the offensive class. That time, Illini rotation. Gillis has fouled on a three. Goody just got a little too close to that landing space, and he's frustrated. He recognized it right away. Gillis will shoot three. Gillis is savage. Got a slight leg kick. Watch, watch his right leg. Slight. Just enough to get the contact. Yeah, that was savvy right there by Mason Gillis. He's been in this league in a long time. Yes, he has. Come back <laughs> for another year, which is the COVID special there. Tell you what. The way they're throwing this NIL around. You talking about getting some eligibility back. I'll sign up for that. I was gonna say I can hear it in your voice. So you just got that slight bit of a man. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, right. Only, right? Right. A rare miss from Gillis. His prowess at the line, but the three-point percentage off the charts as well. 48.4 percent ties Cam Heidi for the team high. This is a team that has been so good from three all year. 40.5 percent as a group. They've got nine different players that shoot at least 36 percent from beyond the arc. That's good for first in the Big Ten and second nationally. It just, it, it, but to, to me, Stephen, that's just understanding your personnel at the highest level. And we've seen some teams in the Big Ten this year, I think, struggle with maybe constructing their roster. Whereas we've got with Purdue, you see Zach Eady, and you've got just shooting everywhere. You know, that's that's the the definition of good roster management. I agree. Mask using the size, tend to shoot now for Harmon. Little zone matchup action from Purdue. The mask looking to back down Heidi again, just using that strength, but comes up short. Good, he's right there for the board. Kick out, Shannon, swing it, Harmon, hop step, extra, Goody, three, bottom. One of those plays, Stephen, where the basketball gods are rewarding Luke Goody. Hasn't been maybe as effective on the offensive glass, has been dealing with an ankle injury, but he makes that effort play to keep it alive, and he gets the open look from the top of the key. Edie can't hit. What great look, though, and Edie's getting the ball now. Last couple possessions exactly where he wants it. Damask, just such a calming presence for this team coming over from Southern Illinois and has just been exactly what they needed at that point guard spot. He likes the matchup with Smith. Kick it. Goody again. Can't hit this time. Too strong and nice rebound by rebound. Smith. Great Smith. Those long arms and he was up there. So he went great. Smith got some boxing about it too that I love. And here he is for three. No. Over four minutes without a field goal for Purdue. They've gotten it done at the free throw line. Dump it to Edie. Had it stripped. And he got it back. He's fouled. Kelly Pfeiffer was right there, and Brad Underwood is beside himself. Shannon's going to pick it up his second. Some major question marks as to how he would look, but, yep. man, those have been answered. Last seven games, 26 points a game, 49% from the field. And if his gravitational pull on the rim is some of the best that you're going to see in college basketball. See how this Illini team can... Weather the storm here without it. Well, they're going to go to Nicolo Moretti, redshirt freshman guard, in his place. Edie inside, and that's just too pretty. It's so deep, Steve. I mean, he's catching that thing almost to the charge arc. And what's Coleman Hawkins going to do with him? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> exactly what we saw, right? A great, great adjustment by Matt Painter and his staff to get Edie that open look with great floor spacing at time. That ended a drought of four minutes and 39 seconds without a field goal for Purdue. Illinois has got nine of its 16 points off second chance opportunities. Hawkins can't get it to go with a foul. Heidi came over on the help and he'll pick it up. That's going to be the, the beauty of that matchup is, yeah, Edie's got the advantage down low, but Coleman Hawkins, you take him out on the perimeter, and Edie's got a guard there as well. Look at the way that Hawkins is just giving ground. He's backed up to that charge arc, off that bounce, and... You let Edie get there, it's going to be a long night. And that floor spacing, though, there was no help to be had by, uh, for the Illini defensively that time. So we'll see both teams going with posh, posh look on the floor. Damask, Moretti, Hawkins, Harmon, and Garrier for Illinois. And Hawkins does convert. 
for Purdue. They keep Heidi out there with Lawyer, Edie, Smith, and Gillis. This could definitely be a game where we see a lot of Cam Heidi. His size, his physicality, he can match up with some of these bigger Illinois guards. Deep touch, too deep. Zach Eady rocks the rim. It's all about where he's catching that thing, Steve. I'm he telling is you. so, so close to the rim. Hawkins, a deep one. Short. Yeah, Coleman trying to flip the matchup in his favor. I think he's going to have to be a little bit more patient than that. Smith fades. Got the heel. Rebound fought for, and that's that group collective feel from Illinois. Ready the other way. Attacking on Smith. They've gone right at him every time down the floor. Yeah, but Moretti might be a little light in the britches to try to go with Braden Smith right now. Got to get in the weight room a little bit more, but it's coming. Smith averaging nearly two steals per game leads the team. Already gets his hand in the cookie jar. Gillis hits the deck. Damask gets it back. Eight to shoot. Swing it. Hawkins. The drive. The kick. Corner. Extra. Knocked out of bounds. Heidi got his hand on it. Well, how about the rotation there from Purdue? I mean, you're in a tough spot, but they are flying around. And when you, you let Edie catch this here, I mean, he's once again right at the charge arc. It's one dribble. He's rolling on Coleman Hawkins. And Hawkins, Stephen, he, he's fighting for his life down there. But I, I know Brad Underwood does not want to give up those threes. But this is going to be interesting to see how they guard. Catch and shoot. to mass too strong. And Jones is there for the board. Ethan Morton getting his first minutes of the night as well for Purdue. Well, Robbie, to your point, I think he just wear Coleman Hawkins out. Jones can't finish, and a late foul comes from Jeff Anderson. Jones will shoot a couple here. It's going to go Justin Harmon picking it up. Once again, I think this is a good call. It might be a little late, but watch the contact right there. Oh, he's, yeah, he slaps him across yeah. the shoulder there. I think, it, I think it is the right call. It's just about when it was made. Yep. And you think if he'd have made the shot, they probably would have made the call, it's right? Enough so they yeah. keep on moving. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I mean, that's old school. How they used to do it. Go ahead, Noah. Well, there's there's chicken up for grabs. You know, you know, I'm excited for potential chicken. But Lance Jones is going to make sure that everybody keeps that mouth watering a little longer. <laughs> It'll also get Edie to the bench. Eight points for Edie. Has been patient, looking for his opportunities. So. We'll play without him. Caleb first on the floor with Kaufman, Wren, Jones, Lawyer, and Morton. Hawkins looking to take advantage. The pump, drive, up and under. Oh, oh. he puts it in! Cannon and a foul! The Zach Eady effect. Coleman Hawkins has put it on the deck twice this in the first half, and he's passed because Zach is waiting for him. Zach's not in there now. He gets creative at the rim. That's a nice finish. Yeah, a little less daunting there, Steven, when you don't got 7-4 to pancake that thing on the glass. But it all starts with the shot bait. You yep. get Trey Coffin Wren off your feet, and Coffin Wren's got to be a little bit more disciplined than that. But you got a straight line to the basket. Helps coming over, and you're right. That, that is an impressive finish by Coleman Hawkins. It's only right he'd remain aggressive on his senior night. Just does all the little things for this team. And has taken this game to another level and Brad Underwood is singing his praises before the game just talking about how much he's matured from year one to year four it's really what he feels coaching at this level is all about how about his approach after the Penn State game you know, a real lesson learned and he, he has responded last three games 21 points a game lawyer that is smooth I love that action he's found, and he's found some confidence in that jumper he, he yes. looks a little bit different than what we saw while he was going through that slump well, I mean, it, it, when the lights are the brightest, Fletcher plays extremely well. 27 against Alabama and Arizona. So, he likes these moments. Not to mention a big game at Assembly Hall. 19 points against Indiana in the rivalry. Harmon with six to shoot. He just barrels through Lawrence. An offensive foul. Look at Justin Harmon just lowering that shoulder. And we've talked a lot about Fletcher Lawyer's defense. That, that, that round goes to him. Moving his feet. Got home and look very aggressive. Yeah, that's that's easy for the ref. Yeah, they're booing here. But that's, that's an offensive foul. Well, I love this action. He comes off the curl hard. So Moretti's trailing. He's got enough clearance to get that jumper off with confidence. And where are they getting him to? A strong right hand. Where he wants to go. That's right. 
15 points on Saturday for Lawyer. Here's Kaufman Ren, who was the star in the first matchup between these two teams with 23 points. Lawyer, same spot, different result, comes up short, and the rebound goes to Garia. It's man's game on the glass right now. Yes, it, it is. Big boy basketball. Leave it. Garrier. Step back. Three ball. It's smooth. Nothing but nylon for Garrier. Wow. Robbie, I didn't expect that. Well, passed, passed on the first one and then got to the step back. Probably a more difficult shot. Looks like Lawyer could have some blood here. He's going to go over to the Purdue bench and get taken care of. So the slight stoppage with 8-11 to play in this first half. And Garrier already with a pair of three balls. Uh, Steven, I, I feel like he's trying to make you look smart. Well, I mean, you know, I, I've, been, I've been out of school for a while, so I've learned a couple things. But Quincy Gary understands the importance of this game. He loves being here at Illinois. He knows he's struggled, struggled lately more than anyone. And he's focused on coming out and making an impact early. And he's certainly done that. I love today. We asked Brad Underwood, you know, why has maybe his rebounding regressed? Because that's effort going to the glass. You know, that's a pretty consistent thing that you can control. And his response was, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, love the honesty. And, yep. you know, I, I'm guessing that if we had the answers, we might be sitting over there in that seat as well. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'll let you have that seat, part. I like this one over here. I agree with that. <laughs> point shooting a difference. Jones can't hit. Produce still without a three ball and then a an over the back call on the shove from behind loose ball foul against Hoffman Wren will get Illinois the ball back Purdue 0 for 4 from 3 Illinois 100% uh, but looks a deceiving <laughs> so, no that's my man that's my brother from another mother special team to be on we got a few of the up in the rappers some like three or four of my teammates have played so always fun to come back home and I gotta say it was really cool to see that group of the final line I back in this building I know I'm not just saying that everybody in here felt that way I appreciate that Robbie no it was, it was fun fun times man although albeit a little while ago <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile the mask so crafty slips his way in for two more Edie doubled on the catch Gary a holds his ground and Edie misses Tapped around, tracked down by Morton. Jones, open, three, he buries it. It's gonna be the game. Yep. I mean, that, that is gonna be the game right there. Can you close down possessions? Even I think Illinois' defense has been pretty good tonight. For the most part, done their job on the glass. Oh, no doubt. And that time, that's the seven foot four. And the length, being able to get his hand on the ball and keep it alive. Good job by Eve. Meanwhile, Braden Smith just tied the Purdue single season record Ooh. for assists and won a move. Just a little now you see me, now you don't from Marcus Damask. And, and Noah, let me share let me share something to you. I remember seeing a forward from Purdue make a similar move with his footwork <laughs> in the bucket area. That was Robbie. Did he have similar Robbie. hair too? It looks like he has similar hair. <laughs> same hair, same barber. <laughs> Smith. Nice recovery by Rogers. Smith a little, little bit of trouble. Edie spins and scores. Oh. Give me a second. And that's what Illinois wants Edie to do is go with his left. And that, you got to tip your hat. Nice job, big fella. This is good offense. Brad Underwood said it a shoot around. We get him to go to his left hand. And that's a win for us. Meanwhile, Smith now all alone. Single season assist record is 208th of the year. Pass. Bruce Parkinson. Ethan Morton is in this game for this reason. To guard Marcus DeMast, and we'll see if he can handle him. Leave it, danger. Oh, he sneaks it in. You know what, Robbie? I was surprised that DeMast went at Morton. I thought Terrence Shannon would have tried to go at Braden Smith. Morton in the lead defender. That's what he's out there to do. He is out there for his defensive abilities. Jones can't hit. Rebound. Going the other way. Loose ball foul against Edie. Well, Matt Painter doesn't like the call. Let's check out Marcus DeMass going against Lance Jones. And just spins and steps through too quick for Zach Edie to respond defensively. And then the nice kick here. And Dane Danger, the dancing bear. Getting it on the glass before Edie can respond. He got there there quickly. Yes, he did. He understood who was coming over. And has kept the crowd involved. The mask has come alive. 
What a fun matchup between two former teammates at SIU. Fades and knocks it through. Oh, look at the, the space he covers there, with Steve. I mean, he's getting all the way to that block, but then he's taking his time using his footwork, and he's taking that fadeaway at the Big Ten logo. Smith bounced oh, it perfectly oh, delivered for Edie. That spacing, man. That, that creates the, the area where the semi truck can drive right through the paint. All right. That's. Purdue's made some nice adjustments here in the first half. Free Edie up in the post area. Hawkins against Jones. Step back, thought about it, leave it. Damask with 12 to shoot. Working on Gillis. Screen from Rogers. Damask, the drive. Nice job. Edie stayed with him. Hawkins couldn't tip it in, and it's out of bounds. Hawkins last to touch. Yeah, but Brad Underwood would love that. You've got multiple efforts on the offensive boards. They've competed here rebounding the basketball. Here's that Zach Eady drive. I mean, you're going to see that this whole middle area is going to be wide open off the roll. Braden Smith, just a simple ball screen. You're popping out Mason Gillis and Marcus Damask. He, he, he's a little bit concerned there about Lance Jones as a shooter, rightfully so. But man, you've got to give some help, Chuck Eady, and then get out on the skip. Guys, Illinois is still an eight point lead, four and a half to play in the first half. We've barely seen Terrence Shannon because of foul trouble. He's got two early ones. Inside for Edie, and that's too easy right over Coleman Hawkins. Well, you're talking about a, a guy at 230, 230 pounds, and Coleman trying to keep a 300 pound man by himself out of the lane. That's a tough act. For the most part, Steven, it's been Edie doing the damage, and the water has been pretty much shut off on everybody else. Garrier, he checked. Oh, he's high. Quincy Garrier makes it rain. He is fired up. He's showing more emotion than I am accustomed to seeing Quincy play with. Smith ducks in for two. You feel like Purdue is starting to find something with that pick and roll. And, and you give up a couple dunks to Edie, and now you're thinking, man, we we got to get back to him. But Braden Smith more than capable. Just beautiful pacing at the hole, too. I mean, not rushed at all. And Gary stepped out of bounds there. Edie rushed to him to get to that three ball, but he has been dominant from the outside so far in this first half. Already three triples. Well, you talk off and Ren has 23, but tonight it's been the flip side of that, and Edie's been the majority of this Purdue offense. And I, I think that I think Illinois would like to double Edie in the post, but Purdue is doing so good at getting him by himself. Like oh, what this. a play. Beautiful lob inside, and Edie with the easy slam. And they've been running that play for three years, and I swear it works almost every time. You fake that cross screen, Edie takes one step forward, they throw it up, and look, he's hanging on rims. I tell you what, as good as Illinois has played, Purdue is in great position here to close out the first half. Extended minutes for Moretti. Shannon still on the bench with the two fouls. Under three minutes to play in this first half. Damask has taken over in his absence. Working on Smith again. Got the size mismatch. Double comes. Lost it. Stripped. Jones got in there. Now on the open court. Jones to the rim. Hangs comes up short. Good and no it's foul. going the other way. Gillis on the foul. That's a play where Lance Jones has got to give that up early and feel like he's going to give it back. And uh, the contest was phenomenal. You're right. And Robbie, did you think at any point in this play that Lance Jones is giving this up? No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I never felt like he was looking to pass. Exactly. You can see it in his eyes. He's going to the room. I don't think any of the 16,000 people in this building felt that way either. <laughs> As Harmon checks back in for Illinois. That was something that Matt Painter talked to Jones about after their game against Michigan State. They love his competitive spirit. They love the joy he plays with. They felt like he was missing that a little bit on Saturday. They're looking for him to attack anytime he gets the ball. They love his speed in the open court. Another example of it doesn't work out quite in the direction there. And we'll see how Illinois responds. Goody's back on the floor as well. Smith got a hand in the cookie jar. Around the horn it goes. Carrier again. Not this time. Goody tracks it down. Open. Harmon. Jones steps in front. Harmon. Tough finish. Good defense there without foul. Up ahead. Lawyer the sidestep. And a wild flip doesn't go. Gillis secures it. Smith trailing. Jones is there for the three. Short. They got to get Luke Goody out of the game. He got hit his left thigh with a knee. He's trying to. He is moving really gingerly. Yeah, he's trying to work it out. Oh, Hawkins shields and scores. 
Look at Brad Underwood is telling Jeffrey Anderson right now that they're, they're going to let this keep going. A steal. Goody gets rid of it. And they'll slow it down. I'll tell you what. He better not be weak playing in this game. He can't get on the floor. You're not ready to hit first. He'll be on the bench. Garrier misses it. And he got fouled. It's going to be Edie. And that's his second. Free throws coming on one and one for Garrier. You know, Garrier getting downhill. Edie going straight up. As much physicality as we've seen tonight, I think they could let that go. He's doing a nice job there. It's straight up and for, for what we've seen, that's a little ticky tack. I agree. I agree. Garrier just 59.4% on this one and one. And what, what an impact he's had, though. Gary has been sort of shooting the three, driving the basketball, get on the offensive glass. This is the Quincy Gary we saw in January where it was like, man, this dude, he's playing like an all-league player. That's right. And I think that sense of senioritis kicks in. You realize that you don't have any opportunities left. Great play. Yeah, he's playing like it. So Edie to the bench, it's Kaufman, Wren, and Gillis in there in the front court. Smith leave it behind Gillis. Gary gets to it. No numbers, and Jones takes it right back. That's an incredible hustle play right there by Lance Jones. Final minute of this first half in a battle for first place, or at least to keep yourself alive for a share of the Big Ten. Smith buries the jumper. There's not many point guards in America that do that ball screen action as well as Braden Smith. His timing, his pacing, he looked back at his defender, knew they weren't going to be able to bother his shot. Goes up smoothly. Monty Hansberry getting some first half minutes freshman. Garrier, pump, leave it, Damask, three ball. No. The rebound knocked out of bounds and stay here. Damask got a great move. Yeah, he did. In Illinois. We talked about their, their rebounding struggles in that first game. They got seven offensive rebounds. So Garrier, Harmon, Damask, Hawkins, and Shannon out there with the two personal fouls. Lob it, Shannon, guides it through. They walk through that play and shoot around. And Brad Underwood said, man, the action on the strong side, it's all fluff. We're looking for the corner three on the weak side, but we're looking for the lob. Purdue butchering the action, and Terrence Shannon going up to get it. We'll be back in 30. Illinois with an eight. He throws it right up. Kaufman Wren is honoring it, never sees the ball. And Terrence Shannon, with his athleticism, is able to go up and get it. Well, those are nice adjustments that teams make late in the, off late in the season. That are not scouted. Nice execution by the Alana. And Underwood will get Shannon back to the bench to avoid that third foul. Six seconds left. Edie's in there working on danger. And Edie gets it to go. Two seconds left. They get it in. Gary A fires. Well short. So Edie does get the bucket back. And this firepower offensive exhibition lives up to the first 20 minutes. Purdue four and two on the year. Illinois has let him score his buckets, but they've done a great job on everybody else. That tells the story. 18 and then four, 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 four. It's been the Edie show as it has been for most of his career and certainly through this season, 24 and 12 per game and continuing in the biggest moment, the biggest game of the conference slate. Shannon was limited by foul, foul trouble in the first half. He's back out there and going right into attack mode. Bounce it. Rogers doubled. Ten to shoot. Swing it. Shannon. Three ball. Short. That was good by Purdue right there. I agree. You handle that post double right there. You get out. You, you get Edie back. And Purdue, a nice defensive stop there coming out of the half. You know, Robbie, I often say the, the most critical time of the game is first five minutes in the second half. Establishing what you're trying to do for the rest of the game. Double DD immediately. Smith is left open. Catch from three. That's too easy right there. I mean, that's, a, that's a step in three. Illinois, they, they double from the strong side passer. The kick out is there. They throw it back in, and then and you're playing to the other side of the floor. That, that was really well done by Purdue. 
That's the first time it's been a one possession game since it was 18-15 in the first half. The mask had been a difference maker in his aggression. And that's going to be a blocking foul called against Fletcher Lawyer. And it'll be on the floor. Gary A. just put the head down. Tell you what, Fletcher Lawyer is <laughs> taking some shots tonight, man. I mean, they are hitting him every chance they get. Gary A. 6'8", 220. Here's that kick out. So much attention there in the painted area with Zach Eady. Love the multiple post feeds and Gary just didn't even let him know that was very physical. Yeah, trying to bruise the chest out here or something with those shoulders. The mask turn around at that time. It's so many of those big shots down the stretch at Wisconsin from that really area of the floor, that mid range short corner. He was lethal down the stretch. Lawyer on the take, hangs, can't hit, and Hawkins grabs the board. Shannon up the floor, hop step, leave it. Hawkins drops the rim. Well, Terrence Shannon generally finish that, finishes that off, but that's high basketball IQ feeding the big fellow who got the defensive rebound and started the break. In for 80. Outside lawyer a three. Bottom. Well, Illinois has made an adjustment. Mm -hmm. They're doubling that post, and Purdue is making them pay for it. And now you're starting to see these threes go for the Boilermakers. A great job of relocating by Fletcher Lawyer that time off the double team. Well, Purdue had missed their first four from three. They've made three of their last four. The mask inside. Shannon will fade away. Oh, the follow! Ty Rogers up high! Looked a little bit like his uncle. <laughs> Going to the fifth floor on that put back. You see a play like that, you think, how does Ty Rogers only have one offensive rebound over the last two games? Post touch, Edie against Hawkins. Just bodies him up, can't hit. Oh, a tip oh, wow. in! Kaufman ran, counted, and a foul. Trey Kaufman ran, rooted himself underneath the basket on that opportunity. Those are the plays he made. In that first meeting where he was just all about effort plays all about getting on the glass We talked about it early Steven 23 points three offensive rebounds in the first game back in January And that's just Trey Kaufman Wren making effort plays that show up for Purdue As we heard it this afternoon at Illinois shoot-around Brad Underwood Was adamant with his team that Kaufman Wren they needed to body him up on that glass Clear him out of the way, and that's the exact reason you saw it in that first matchup, as Robbie had mentioned. Damask on the take, leave it. Rogers again for two. Well, they found something there with Rogers cutting. And Robbie, we talked about it. Rogers could be effective if he screens effectively. Yeah, cuts hard. I think a guy he could watch would be Tony Allen. I mean, Tony yep. Allen was such an effective defender, great cutter, ball mover, screener. Could model his game off him and certainly learn some things. Edie had it stripped. The line nine, no real numbers. Damask doesn't care. Side step. I think he traveled. He did. He snuck one in there. Good call. Just his foot almost got caught up there. You know, he, he kind of was like one, a silent two, and then the euro for three. <laughs> oh boy, this is Ty Rogers coming on the finish. Sweet feed. From Marcus Damask putting pressure once again on the boilers in the paint area. Still a three point game. Illinois has led the entire way so far. Kaufman ran against Garrier. Spin. Kaufman ran. Campaign at home. Edie couldn't tip it through. Two good opportunities. Kaufman ran to his right. Edie at the rim. Damask. Oh, had it taken away. Smith got the hand of the cookie jar. Here comes the other way. Smith will slow it down. Run some offense. Now, Edie being guarded by Gary. Let's see what they take advantage of. Smith can't hit. Hawkins up ahead. Shannon attacks and finishes. No, he missed it. Got it back. Oh, and he can't get it to go, but he'll shoot two. Carnage on the fast break. And Shannon will eventually have his chance to put points on the board when we return. Has had a phenomenal year, but to me, Stephen, I'd love to hear your opinion. Winning has to be factored in. I when you have agree. this many good players, winning games has to be factored in. And if these are the two best teams, which I think we all agree would agree that they, they are, I would have no problem seeing two from each. I agree, and I think that you know when you you have 
defensive player of the year or player of the year or all first team like you said winning has to matter it has to have more weight than maybe individual statistics and that's no disrespect to Jameer Young because he he hasn't had a ton of help shooting the basketball this year they really packed the paint on him to stay the least but he, he's been phenomenal but I, I just think that you can't deny it. the four players from these two teams have been tremendous Heidi and Gillis in there for Purdue and Edie with two more on the board. And Holman Hawk is gonna sleep well tonight. <laughs> this dude is just he is fighting like crazy, and you know what? There's just not much you can do with 7-4-300. Not at all. And skill. Yes. We got the skill part no, in there. No question. Another 20-point game for Edie. He's got 20 points, six rebounds already. Corner three. The match comes up short. Rebound fought forward. It's going the other way. As Rogers and Gary both got a hand on it. Ben Coleman Hawkins for the majority of this game to start the second half we saw some doubles but this is one-on-one -on -one coverage we, we said in the first half man Edie left shoulder that that is so difficult to defend and that first time tonight he he had an up fake and then put it on the deck to get to his move so Edie changing things up a little bit and they go right back to the well and he continues to produce it's just too big too big too skilled Illinois not able to come on the help because he's Bearing Coleman, like you talked about, Rob. The question is, can you flip the matchup here? You know, can you get Hawkins to, to play to an advantage? But with Rodgers on the floor, Edie's just going to guard him. You, know, you got Mason Gillis guarding Coleman Hawkins, and that's really not near the mismatch. The mask attacks. Rodgers with 10. Back outside, six to work with. Inside Carrier, and he's patient with two free throws coming. That's the mismatch. Yep. And, and Illinois found it. Cam Heidi will pick up the foul. It's a really nice pass over the top. And look at the spacing for Illinois there. I mean, you got three guys on top of the perimeter, and, and you're just throwing that lob. It's job by Gary of recognizing that he had Fletcher Lawyer and, and carving out space, and the pass was on time and on target. This Illinois offense has slowed down a bit. No field goals in nearly three minutes. It's Justin Harmon's going to check in, trying to ignite something. Rodgers will go to the bench. So it'll be Harmon, Shannon, Damask, Hawkins, and Garrier against Smith, Lawyer, Heidi, Edie, and Gillis. And now, Brad Underwood's trying to insert Amani Hansberry. Next chance he gets. The freshman was really putting forth quite the effort at <laughs> shoot around earlier today he said some of the best shoot around screens that I, I mean oh and man. illinois goes very live yes. I, I would say as live as anyone we see at shoot around and Monty hansberry was not holding back oh, he right. was laying wood out there he was and hit shannon hard one time so let's see if he can do the same to Edie here let's see what the freshman has against the seven foot four three hundred pounder two arms again that arm bar is one arm you put two in. I tell you what, though, Edie was trying to back Hansberry down. It wasn't down. moving, it moving it, to him. He wasn't. So I mean, one right there, but then you get that left arm is on there. Now he's got both, and you can see he's just tied up in there. Lawyer kick out. Gillis, half the shot clock on, had knocked out of his hands. Out of bounds to Illinois. Coleman Hawkins, another defensive play. It's one way, Stephen, to keep the ball out of there. Get, get some ball pressure. Yes. Make that passer feel uncomfortable, and Coleman Hawkins did that right there. I like this matchup. The mask and Heidi. Heidi's understanding that in order to get on the floor, offense has to take a secondary role. The mask. Back down. Swing it. Shannon. Hawkins with six. Working on Gillis. Kick it. Three ball corner. No. It is too strong from Hansberry. I know he's made one this year, but I can't imagine that Brown would love that shot. And there's a foul on the freshman as he was battling with Edie on the fast break. It'll be the third team foul on Illinois. I'd say Monty Hansberry, he wants so badly to do well, but sometimes you've got to let things go. So he's trying to hit Edie early. And if you're not underneath him in that position, you're going to get called for the foul every time. Edie working with 22, give him 24. That was a big time move. Right there. 
just that one two that, that is covering a ton of ground he has even this score it has been all illinois they have led the entire way from the opening minutes damask leave it for Harmon. hawkins against gillis Shannon on the take got the bump. Oh, he got the bucket the hoop and harm a chance for three And they will count it I thought when Doug Sermon came in to talk to Jeffrey Anderson, I thought he's gonna wave it off I mean he was so emphatic with it See the step through there Ooh, I don't, Boy, he was in pretty good position here. He didn't move it's one of those bang bang plays right there man, but Terrence Shannon he puts so much pressure on your defense He's making the officials make a call and, and he puts his head down. He is gonna get to the back. I agree I love his tenaciousness Being tenacious I should say getting downhill using that frame That painter said then because of that attacking style he freezes you and that step back three is lethal Haven't seen a whole lot of it yet tonight as Smith was trying to get it into Edie, and he was grabbed from behind, and Hansberry picks up his third. Brandon Smith is as good as anybody in the country at showing the ball with the head fake and having no worries whatsoever about pivoting, finding an angle to throw it inside. And Imani Hansberry right now is fighting for his life. You know, he's just trying to survive out there with Edie. Body's hitting the floor, and Lawyer hits the floater. Mm -hmm. He's done his part on offense tonight. We talked about yes. how he's going to be on the floor. He, he's going to be a factor making shots, and he has done enough. I'm telling you guys, Heidi is giving the mask some problems. He's not able to walk up and get into his space. He's got the physicality and the size to, to deal with some of the problems the mask can give you. As we say that, oh, what a block. Edie erases it. Smith the other way. Purdue looking for its first lead of the night. They go to their go-to man, the reigning national player of the year. Back to Edie on Hansberry. Oh, it's blocked. Harmon got a hand on it. Here comes Hawkins the other way. Take it right back. Heidi. Beautiful read. Now Smith in transition. Pick and roll with Edie. Smith stops. And a foul, it's Hansberry, and it is number four, if that's the case. He was knotted up with Edie once again, and the freshman is using just about all of the quota. One away. Carl Sampson, I mean, you're talking about some of the all-time greats to have ever played, and, and I, I always am amazed, and, and both of us, I think, can appreciate this, Steven, because we played in this league. For the majority of guys that play in the Big Ten, and you look at Edie's numbers right now, 24 and six, most 95% of the players you do that you think man. I had a career night. <laughs> it's amazing yep. And now he has a chance to give Purdue its first lead of the night at the free throw line Talk about how many fouls he draws per game leads the country in that stat and, and You know Brad Underwood did talk about the fact that they had some experience with this with Kobe Coburn a couple years yep. ago Just because of the strength, you know, he's not 7'4", but he was so much stronger than everybody else It's so hard to officiate a guy like that It's also hard to game plan for a guy like that and it felt like they had at least something to take from that experience themselves No, you're right, and you know when you have a guy this size And you're trying to game plan against him It's, it's next to impossible because It'd be one thing if he was 250, he's 300. And so body-wise, it's very difficult to body him up. He can put his hands up and walk down the lane. There's not much anybody can do about it. When I, when you're talking about when Kofi Coburn was here. That, that's going to be looked at as one of the golden eras of bigs in this league. Hunter Dickinson, Trace Jackson Davis, Edie, Travion Williams, Kofi. I mean, it was just loaded. Oh, Shannon missed it, and it's going to be a foul. It's going to be free throws for Ty Rogers. I love Rodgers' activity in the offensive line. He has really looked to, to get to those offensive boards. And that's a thing where, man, he can do that every time. I agree. That's three on Edie, by the way. Let's take a look at what this loose ball foul looked like. Ty uh, Rodgers, that's, you just said it, Rob. If he can get to the glass like that on a consistent basis, that's going to be tough for Purdue to keep him off. Woody will come back in for Illinois. 
It'll be Lawyer for Purdue. Rodgers is really leaning on that. It's almost like he's beating that ball to the rim and getting into the lane. That's something that he's got to be careful on. Well, the thing, the thing that really trips me out about guys, like he's a, he got good form, watch his follow through, but nice rotation. It's got to be a lack of confidence. That time he, he held that better. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. And that, that can happen, right? You, you get in your head about some of those shots at the line, and you're all by yourself yeah. in terms of it's just you and the goal. And, and unfortunately, also 16,000 who are watching the game in the building. Right. Kind of like my golf swing. Gellis <laughs> <laughs> around the horn, 10 to shoot for Smith. Switch with Harmon. Inside Edie's fouled again. Goody got him initially, and we'll see if that's who does get it. It is. That was high level. I agree. Great vision. Just from the top of the key. I mean, he is just zipping that in there. And, you know, the thing is, probably they'll say, well, he's throwing to a 7'4 guy. He put that on a rope. No doubt. That was not a lob pass. That was a that was a heater. I think but when you start to float those in there, that's when you allow defenders to maybe swim around and make plays on the ball. You guys like chicken? The crowd is trying to will this into existence here. <laughs> you know what, Noah? I like free. Yeah. So, <laughs> if it's free chicken, I'm down. If it's free, it's for me. That's right. And Edie says, no nuggets for you. <laughs> I'd like to see him blow a kiss to the crowd. <laughs> You're welcome. Nearly midway through this second half in a battle for the Big Ten. Purdue has already clinched at least a share of the title. Illinois still alive to do the same. Drive and kick. Goody had to go get it. Harmon gets it back. Nine to shoot for Hawkins. Working on Heidi. Hawkins floats. Can't finish. And a rebound to Gillis. A chance for Purdue once again to take their first lead. Jones. Pull up. Can't hit. Comes up short on the three. Great look, though. He loves those transition threes. He hunts them. Shannon. Tough finish, and Edie right there to alter the shot, grab the rebound, now get out in transition. It's Jones again. The trailer, Gillis, drills the three. Purdue in front for the first time tonight. And that never happens if Braden Smith does not have his eyes up the floor. I mean, he's throwing that ahead to Lance Jones. That defense is collapsing to him, and Mason Gillis just flows right into the left wing. Harmon can't respond. Didn't like that shot from Harmon. I thought that was a little too quick. Illinois missed five in a row as Purdue defense starting to tighten the screws. Well, what we anticipated maybe being a 90-point game between the two has settled back into a, a Big Ten grudge match. Edie can't finish. No real numbers. Rodgers slows it down. The mask and Gary will check in next dead ball. Shoot now. He's taking this. Shannon, give and go. Hawkins, block. Great block. Edie, oh, he stares him down. Edie just put Hawkins back in the upside down. Corner three, Gillis comes up short. And it'll go to Illinois. What a sequence. Back and forth, and Edie dominating on both ends. Well, Edie went down a couple possessions ago, but he did not give up on that play. Great block. Bowman Hawkins thinks he's free. And the big condor comes out of nowhere <laughs> with the sweet block. I like the cut by yeah. Coleman Hawkins as well. I mean, you just, he's cutting to the rim. Edie kind of coming off gingerly. You have to hope for Purdue's sake that this is just one of those things where Matt Painter's thinking, all right, we're at 9-0-1. I'm taking this to the under eight. And it's not one of those deals where he's asking to come out. Well, he will get checked out. Bruce trainer Chad Young, 12th year with the program. And we'll take a look at the reigning national player of the year who has been absolutely dominant once again tonight. And remember, Steve, in that first half when he left the floor, Illinois went to the rim. Gary A will do just that. <laughs> For two, no. He'll shoot two instead. Nearly got the roll. You called a game or two, haven't you, Rob? <laughs> well, that's great recognition by the guys on the floor. Yeah, I mean, I agree. You, you, you lose one of the best shot blockers in this conference, and, man, Illinois has got to make them pay for him sitting over there on the sideline. Well, you see these guys, everybody's mouth is wide open, yeah. hands on, hips. 
just an indication of how hard these two teams are playing. Area is cooled off after that quick start in the first half. This is an Illinois team that's won six straight here at State Farm Center. Last loss was to Maryland on January 14th. A 16th home win, which would be the case tonight, would be the most since going 17-0 in 88-89. And that free throw ends a nearly three-minute scoring drought for Illinois. I think Trey Coffin Rand's going to get his number called on this one. Smith, leave it. Lawyer on Damask. Half the shot clock gone. Smith off the screen. Seven to shoot. First one to set it. Now Smith's going to have to take it and make it a big three for Braden Smith. <laughs> oh, I got a chuckle. Braden Smith just lulling Quincy Gary to sleep. Like, yeah, I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna drive. No, I'm gonna put this in your eyeball. Four point Purdue lead. Seeing what they can do with ED on the bench. Under eight looming. The mask. Oh, he gets it to go. The strength with a chance for three. Boy, got a high five from Myers over there. <laughs> your plus minus was tremendous. <laughs> your, five, your plus minus was great. Oh, That's why I love my dad. But, you know, it's uh, not my finest. Meanwhile, Illinois went 16 of 30 from the floor in the first half. They're 5 of 17 in this second half. But the match completes the three point play. It's back to a one point game. So, Robbie, you made a point off the air. Talk about the way that Purdue has handled Terrence Shannon. You want to expound on that after this? Didi, just add two more to the tally. Well, just the fact that they've kept Shannon out of transition, and certainly the foul trouble kind of took Terrence Shannon out of rhythm there in the first half. But, I mean, this is the guy that leads the country in fast break points per game. So you limit him in that regard, and that's a big part of his arsenal. The pass going right at Edie, and the wall stays in front. Good decision there to kick that oh, out. Keep out. playing your offense. Garrier thought about it. Seven to shoot for Hawkins, working against Gillis. Shimmy Shake, Damask, gonna have to make it happen himself. Oh, he flies to the rim, but he missed it. He went Laurie airborne. Lori got a piece yeah, of that, I think, too. Gillis, another three. He's on target from downtown. Timeout, Illinois. Boy, what a response by Purdue. Look at the floor spacing. Now you got to make a decision if you're Terrence Shannon Jr. He tried to play halfway, and Mason Gill's like, nope, not close enough. Well, Steve, we talked about Lawyer's defense keeping him on the floor. It's been good enough, and he's got 9.5 assists. His offense has been good enough as well. Agreed. They're trying to post Mason Gillis up. That's more than a notion. Gary A. Now it's back to Hawkins against Edie. We've seen it all night. Hawkins stops. Hawkins fakes up and under, kick it. Shannon's gonna have to get it off, and he just stepped out of bounds. I mean, how many up and unders did we just see right there? There was two or three, and that's the Edie effect. Zach Edie's still moving a little bit gingerly here, but what discipline to stay down. There's one, here comes two, and then the pass. That, that, that was a lot of uh, pivoting there by Coleman Hawkins. I agree. It was Ross Keller trying to move the couch. Approaching the six minute mark of this second half. Edie. So Terrence Shannon got on the top of Braden Smith. Kind of blew that up initially. Smith, five to shoot. Circles around. Smith finds the space. Oh, a beautiful strip down. Hawkins forces the turnover. The Coleman Hawkins special right there. Yeah. He's active hands. He, he loves that. He loves that. He's coming off of Edie and gets his hand on the basketball, showing his versatility on defense. That's easier said than done when you say he's coming off of Edie because you're just, again, you're giving up so much size and weight that you're battling down there. You come over for help side, and the active hands by Coleman Hawkins, we've seen it all season long. Yeah, it shows his versatility on the defensive end. Illinois one for its last eight from the floor. Hawkins, the drive, and Ooh. finish! He explodes for the slam. Well, not trying to respond here. Coleman Hawkins getting a little senioritis down the stretch.
Jones. Lawyer fighting through. Seven to shoot. Lawyer past Harmon. Holds. Can't hit. Rebound to Max. Bit of a gamble there, but it ended up paying off. Hawkins thought about it. Reset. It's a mask. The drive. The back down on Jones once again. Rip through for two. That is high level footwork right there by Marcus Damask. You've got two coming over. Purdue sending defenders from that bottom side. And Damask is finding his way stepping through. Back to a two-point game. Edie, one-on-one. -on -one. Hawkins holds his ground. Edie can't score. I tell you what, that's all defensive team worthy right there. Now, Edie's been torching him early, but Illinois is starting to get some timely stops. Chance to tire, take the lead. Damask, oh, oh what a finish! Oh, my goodness. Damask takes him to class and ties it at 64. Well, my opinion. Well, I think, Stephen, when you see him in person, you don't understand from the television what kind of body he has because he's got great size at 6'6", but he is all of 215 pounds, and he, he knows where the weight room is as well. He's got a physicality. He gets to the rim. He's great nice, so he plays pick and roll. He's just a bucket getter for Illinois. Right Underwood said watching him back in his home state of Wisconsin was a work of art with the 31 points. In their win over the Badgers, and he is coming up huge against the number three team in the country. Inside, E.D. can't take it home. Help from Shannon. E.D.'s had some good looks at the rim, and Terrence Shannon tried to come over and block that, and he's come up gingerly himself. Looks like it could be his left hand. The math driving kick. Swing it good, he thought about it. Now it is Shannon against the smaller Smith. Eight to work with. I don't think they know the clock is low. Shannon's going to have to make it happen. He's fouled. He will shoot two, still holding that left wrist. He's had some looks, though, that I'm sure he feels like he should have finished. And we've talked about this all game long. Coleman Hawkins doing his job of making Edie score over the top, trying to wall up. You got Shannon coming over. Just hope that Shannon's okay. You, know, you always talk about the pill. Yeah. Didn't shoot it there, but he's still he's still grabbing that wrist. Right. But watch this medicine work. One is here. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Hey, <laughs> do you remember? Hey, points are on the line, right? right. Like, I, I can tough this out. Yeah, hey, you remember? Yes. That, that pill has some medicine in it. I mean, it's not just you. It's, no, it's, it's everybody, it's everybody. That's, that can score, right? That's right. Shannon now with a tough 10 points, came in 46 points away from 2,000 in his career. Two big ones. 8-0, Illinois run. Purdue over three minutes, nearly four minutes without a point. Oh, a collision. Shannon and Jones go down. Lawyer inside for Edie. Mismatch with the mask. Smith, kick. Lawyer, three. Bullseye. Big hit for Lawyer. Tell you, we, we question whether he can stay on the floor. He's, he's answered those questions. Oh, big time. Big time. That's ball movement, though, by Purdue. Inside and out. Under three to play. The mask to the rim. Open. Harmon. Three. Can't respond. Gillis secures the rebound. What a pass, though, from the mask. He left his feet. That defense, I believe it was Fletcher Lawyer, took away the corner. He sprayed it for a great look. Smith dashing to the basket. Lawyer attacks on Harmon, floats it in. Well, he has been clutch. He's not the most physically imposing guy you're going to see in the Big Ten, but but he has some stones. I mean, he is not afraid, and when he gets it going, he can score the rock. The mask attacking on Edie once again. Reset now with Shannon. Calls for the screen to ten. Oh, great Smith. Oh, oh, sauce. No bucket. Lawyer up ahead, Smith. And he has no numbers. I Two mean, great, minutes to play. Great Smith was a defensive pound that time. I see Terrence Shannon looking over Brad Underwood, but I 
That's a heck of a defensive stance by Purdue. Screen for Meaty. Smith pulls. No. Rebound tapped around. And Smith tracks it down. Ninety seconds to play. Top twelve battle. Smith lost it. Oh, there was a kick ball. No foul. Oh, Harmon off the ball. That, I think that would have been no for that. I don't think you're right. I don't think that was touched. Yeah, that was off the foot of, of Brayden Smith. I mean, that is. That's a. It's a bang bang there. Damask may have gotten that right foot in there, but the problem now is Purdue's in the bonus. It is one and one. The foul on Harmon is going to send Lawyer to the free throw line, who on the season is 83.3%. What? I'd love to see a replay. I mean, I, that... we're over here stunned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, in this juncture of the game. I mean, it's, it's not the smartest play by Justin Harlan, but it would be okay if that's just kind of one of those where they let that go. Yeah, because we've seen a lot of physicality tonight. Lawyer now with 12 second half points, and he's put his team up by five. The mask on the take, and he's fouled. Edie goes down hard. He's taking some hits here. That was a great action by Illinois. There was. Getting the mask down here. <laughs> Trying to get that switch, and you see Lance Jones and Braden Smith talking right now. To try to figure that out. They're trying to get Braden Smith on Damas. Damas turns the corner and draws a contact. And Edie just, he's been on his backside a little bit here in the second half. Some awkward falls. And that is. Edie had that incredibly quick start. Now he's slowed down 28 points, 8 rebounds. Damas has been really a go to guy for this Illinois offense now up to 16. I don't think we talk about the level of conditioning enough with this young man. The mask is bringing the ball up. He's initiating offense. He's wearing down the shot clock. And then he's coming back on the other end trying to de defend. Well, how about the fact, Stephen, that in Big Ten play, almost 19 points a game. That, that's good for fifth in the conference. He's gone for over 27 times and has two 30-point games in league play. Purdue battling. For an outright title in the Big Ten with a win. Illinois trying to stay in the race for a share. Ten to shoot, a minute to play. Smith, hook, inside, knocked away. Edie's got it. Jones is open. Splash! A three for Jones. Wow. I'll tell you what. I thought Edie was going to shoot that yeah, shot right when, he, the when he got it. And he kicked it out. I thought to myself, oh, that was a mistake. Lance Jones thought otherwise. Analytics thought otherwise, too. <laughs> That's right. Thinking you got a contested two or a, an open three. And that what a decision by Edie. The unselfishness on display. Illinois has got to go fairly quickly now. Damask got the contact in the bucket. A major mistake. And Damask with a chance to bring it back to a three-point game. Great recognition once again. Lawyer's a little bit too high. He's a little too close to the mask. He does not have the strength to stay up with him. And once the mask gets his shoulder in the lawyer, it's canceled right. Christmas. One of those plays where it's a little bit Monday morning quarterback too. But it, but if you're beat like that, I'm lawyer. I'm I'm Let making sure I'm not fouling. Great point. More importantly, 15 second different shot clock to game clock. Big free throw, big three-point play, timeout Illinois in a three-point ball game. We'll be back in 30 seconds for what should be an incredibly exciting finish in Champaign. Just if Purdue scores or you end up fouling late in that shot clock, it's not leaving you with much time, and it's a, now a two-possession game. I like Illinois getting up here and showing pressure, but I, I'd be okay with them extending the game and taking a foul. I, I'd love to see them allow for a double team and possibly a steal. And then going for the foul. Almost tried to foul Edie there. Instead, it's Smith into the front court. He gets doubled right away. Jones on the drive. Jones. A bad shot. No I foul was called. And then popped out to Lawyer. Another chance. 14 on the shot clock. Still a 15-second difference. Doubled again. Gillis. Eight to shoot. Leave it. Smith. Five to shoot. A deep three. Oh! Braden Smith. Kaboom!
a crowd silencer in Champaign. Wow. 18 and a half seconds left. They've got Harmon, Goody, Damask, Hawkins, and Shannon on the floor. That's a big time shooting lineup. And run on the baseline. Damask has it. Precious time ticking off. Crosses with 13. Damask on Heidi. Leave it. Shannon forced the three. No. Rebound. Tipped around. Gillis has it. Seven seconds left. Into the front court for Smith. And Purdue is going to become the first back-to-back -back outright Big Ten champ since 2007. The Boilermakers continue their dominance and win it 77-71 on the road.